Welcome to this series, Fnatic versus Rogue. We are moments away from Champion Select. I'm Dracos. Joining me, as always, Kadril and Vettius to bring you what should be an incredible best of five. But a lot of questions are on our minds. But on the fans' minds, it seems like it's Fnatic, no question, all the way. Yeah, I mean, they've been to 15 games so far, haven't they? No matter what, you're going to play at least three games here, 18 games. They've played a regular spin in under two weeks, basically. They certainly have, and they've fought their way through the gauntlet. They have shown that they have only gotten better as the games have gone on. But I think that the series versus MAD did not show us the full potential, the full skill level of this rogue roster. I really feel like that they made MAD work for those wins, and I'm hoping we can see a stronger rogue in today's series. And it's so incredibly critical for rogue, too, because because I think that if they do win here and it looks sloppy at all, their fans are not going to have any faith in Rogue on the run back against Mad Lions. Because while you said, when you look closely, much closer series, still a 3-0 at the end of the day. And if you want to build that confidence, you have to come out swinging here in this first match. And Fnatic are not the same opponent as Mad. Rogue called them Mad Light. But even that, I think, might be an unfair characterization. And I think confidence is the most important thing. You just touched on it there. Fnatic must have a lot of confidence coming into this. Like we said, 15 games. They've been through the absolute gulag to get here. And they're mentally trained. They have a great mantra behind them. But Rogue looked so defeated when they lost to Mad Lions. It's all about bouncing back for Rogue and keeping the train of momentum for Fnatic. Well, we are going to be jumping into the draft for game one. It is, of course, the semi-finals of the LEC Finals Weekend. The winner will be moving on to fight MAD in the finals tomorrow. So, without further ado, let's see what gets removed. I imagine that the virus is going to be taken off the board. Things like Thresh will also likely be removed. We saw a huge priority on Lee Sin. Cadrill often actually being first picked from both these teams, uh, if it was an option. Yeah, jungle definitely contested. Diego, Lee, and Sinzal seems to be the aim of the game. Sinzal falling off a tiny bit, I must admit, but I think everyone's minds will be on twisted fate. Is Rogue going to ban it? We saw Niski get his hands on it four out of the five games against G2, and every single early game looked crisp and clean. He was everywhere on the map. Now, I will say, I wouldn't blame Rogue for not banning TF in game one. Game one is all about testing the waters and see what you can get out of Fnatic. Maybe Larson has an answer. Maybe they've seen this TF in action and they have something to match into it, but banning it's always a good idea. And testing the water is doubly important because we've seen the meta even in playoffs, even in series change, series to series and week to week. First, it was Zinzao versus Viego every single game. Trundle rising in priority, not just in the LEC, but internationally. A lot of things are going to look different. Already seeing a Kennen banned away from Odawamne on red side, limiting some of his potential early picks or counter picks in the case of this draft. Yeah, and there's a Reddington man as well, targeted at Adam, just taking away blind picks there for him. And maybe if Rogue were looking at some kind of last pick support for a counter, just take away a, um, a blind pick top from the side of Odawamne. Sin's out taken away, just talked about Lee Sin. TF still up, is Rogue going to ban it? Rakan is the other one that I was thinking about. Perhaps they're willing to make that trade. You know what, game one, we'll give you Twisted Fate because we believe that we have an answer to it. And then we'll actually pick the Rakan for themselves. Pike. With the Pike being banned, this suggests to me a potential brawl somewhere in the Rogue Perhaps. draft. But we'll have to wait and see. With Twisted Fate, with Rise all up and available, Fnatic are spoiled for choice. Yeah, I mean, if Blind Pick Brown comes out, Rakan will come out from Hillisang 100%. And if the trade-off does come through, as much as I like it, could be dangerous blinding Rakan, but Rise picked up. This is why I like testing the waters and not banning TF, because they don't even go for it. They go for the Rise. Aphelios Trundle picked up already. Wouldn't be surprised to see Fnatic match it with AD jungle here. And while we have seen technically the Trundle be a flex pick, early expectations will be that that could go into the jungle or should go into the jungle in the hands of Expired, something that we'll keep our eye on moving forward. But no contesting, as mentioned, uh, of Niski's mid lane champion pool. Essentially, he's played three champions, one game of LeBlanc across the entire series, and it Rogue, we were wondering, hey, are they going to go for the triple ban instead? As you said, spoiled for choice and now upset with the Felios locked in on the opposite side. Will opt for the Ezreal, something safe. They have shown that they can play around the Ezreal if they want to, but they can also just leave him on an island. I mean, Fnatic could get themselves the Rakan here if they want to. It was very big in their series last week against G2. We know that Hillisang is very comfortable on the champion, but they may want to lock in something like a Lee Sin as well. It very much depends Ooh. on their preference, and it seems that Rakan is going to be the priority. Nine That's, games, 100% yeah. win ratio. That's, this champion has been insane across the entirety of playoffs, no matter who has picked it up. That's exactly what I was going to say, right? This Rakan is undefeated. The only worry I have here is I think they can get a really hard winning bot match up here, Rogue, if they want to. Something like Leona, you know, uh, Nautilus, some kind of Aftershock support. Even Morgana oh, is going to make okay. it so that lane phase is really difficult for Fnatic. So yes, you've got the Rakan. Yes, Hillisang has it. It'll be good in the mid to late game, but early game is definitely going to struggle. We've seen Hillisang pick Morgana into Rakan lanes. I think the last time I saw Trimby on Morgana was in the finals against Mad Lions, and they were so far ahead with Katie Morgana, but they just threw the game. They were so far ahead in lane itself, but they just couldn't close it out. And Trimby certainly a player that we've come 
come to know as more of the playmaking champion supports, as is most of our top supports in the league. Have to see how he can handle the Morgana. A lot of skepticism when Hillisang was the one to pick it up. See if Trimby and Hatsama can make more of an impact on this champion, because it does limit or not really provide a lot of the engage options that like his Rel or his Rakan may have. Yeah, now just looking at expectations here for the Draft Fnatic, maybe banning out mid laners or counter pick tops on five to give Adam an easier time. Rogue obviously going to take away junglers. Lee Sin taken away. I wouldn't be surprised if Diego uh, banned. And maybe, just maybe, Whippo might have to go something like Graves. Ooh, that's a good point because his champion pool is being pushed to the very brink. We did see him bring out the Jarvan last week as well. We know that he's True. familiar with things like the Olaf. Debatable if that necessarily makes the most sense into things like Aphelios Morgana in this situation. Good one, uh, Betty. But with the Leeson and the Jarvan now removed, again, Rogue is continuing to pinch the pool away from Whipper. Perhaps they want him on the Viego because they're saying, you know what? We know that Trundle is a good matchup into it. We're happy to take that fight. And also Jarvan against Aphelios Morgana. No flashes, instant engage. You have no escape. So I think the Jarvan ban is just securing your bot lane in case, you know, Jarvan, notorious level two ganker, level six, it's really hard to play bot lane. But on top of a Rakan, it's a lot of engage. TF, Orianna taken away. Larson should have a lot of options still. We've seen Azir's, we've seen uh, Orianna's, we've seen Syndra's. Just control majors coming out. Could also play for a very hyper-aggressive lane. Things like the Lucian, perhaps. Debating their options, a lot of hover over here that I can't imagine would get locked in. So we'll just see what the option is for Rogue, who they want to save this last pick for. Now, Odawamne has been the king of blind picks for the entirety of playoffs thus far, and it looks like now the Rogue have selected Red Side, that they've shifted away from their previous tendencies. He may finally get a chance to counter pick in top lane. <laughs> Woo! So personally, I'm not a massive fan of just Azir in general in the current meta, but I think it makes sense into the composition they've drafted. You can see that Rogue is definitely going for more of a scaling front to back team fight style. They can use the Azir to outscale and outrange in the late game team fights. Um, and when it comes to Fnatic, they're going to be looking to play a lot more on the side lanes. Yep, there's Diego coming through. Now the big question mark is what will Adam blind pick top here? He's a bit pinched on his champion pool right now. Obviously, Renekton taken away. We've seen his Darius and Olaf, but they're more notorious counter picks. I think the blind is the biggest question for me. Camille could be a good option. We're seeing a lot of no. Camille blind pick. Mundo as well. Something on the weak side could work. Camille is a champ that's risen a lot in priority. In the LCK, in the finals today between Damwon and T1, this champ was being first picked. Oduamne hovering Darius there for the oh. matchup itself. But I don't think we'll see Oduamne's Darius yet. Gwen, something more expected. Mundo would be an interesting one. Of course, we saw earlier today in the LCK Finals the Camille side of the matchup, or at least the Khan side of the matchup, seemed to do pretty well on the Camille into Gwen for the yep. most part. But now the Jay's coming out. I love it. You can hammer back when the hook shot comes in. There's a lot of positive interactions there. And I'm ready to see what Odawamne looks like when he gets counterpicked, when he is set up more for success. Oh, yeah, definitely. They're going to have to play towards the top side here. But then again, you have two pushing side lanes. I think this Jay's pick was crucial because if you pick a Mundo, you're really heavy AP with Azir, Mundo, Morgana. Trundle doesn't really dish out that much damage past the, the early game into the mid game. So I think too much AP. I like the Jace pick a lot. It's going to win into the Camille. It's just a question of who can get to top first and can they pressure that lane to get the Jace far enough ahead. So I will say that one of the weaknesses of Rogue's composition is they don't have any easy way to start off fights. They do have a couple of pick tools with things like the Morgana. Her flash engage is definitely also an option. Things like the Pillar. A lot of disruption and a lot of ways to be annoying for Fnatic, but running at their opponent is not going to be the easiest thing to do. So setting up on the objective first is going to be very important for Rogue so that they get Fnatic to come into them. Yeah, you're 100% correct. If you look at both team comps, Realistically, you have a really good 1-3-1 one, one from Fnatic. If those solo laners can get ahead, it's going to shut the Jace out, and the Jace will have to go to grouping into team fighting. But that's what Rogue's comp also wants to do. Azir, Philos, Morgana, lots and lots of team fight. With a Trundle next to you, you should be able to play front to back. Big question marks are Hillisang and Adam's flanks and the side lanes. That's what Fnatic wants to look at. Should is obviously also the important word. Should be able to fight front to back. We've seen creative uses of Rise, Realm Warps. Will Fnatic even opt for the 5v5s? Can they keep it on the sidelines? Can they keep it away from those bigger full-on fights? And most importantly, as it feels is often the case in a Fnatic game, who will take the early game? We know it can be explosive. It's time. We are getting into game one. Rogue versus Fnatic. Who will face Mad? And here we go. Two best of fives left for the LEC world slots already decided, order not. But it's time to see what both these teams can bring to the table. This was the game about testing the waters. They left Niski's champion pool wide open. It was not the twisted fate. It was the rise that he opted for. Larson back to Azir, a pick he has been known for historically. Time to see 
who can take the first game. Yeah, it's going to be a very important one. The first game can also indicate a lot, but why well, I say that, so far in our LEC playoffs, the first game actually doesn't really <laughs> indicate a lot. You lose the series if you win game one. Mad yeah. Lions is the only exception to that rule, or perhaps curse. Uh, I think that for both these teams, obviously fighting for a lot, Rogue want to get that rematch against the Mad Lions, make that return to the finals, whereas Fnatic want to return to the finals, the organization. Adam. So we see an early play from Adam in mid. That's really big for really mid lane. Big. Larson, I think, will be able to force out the early flash. Does not look like it, but a ton of damage. And if he has to either burn TP or sit in this lane with almost no HP, burning through corrupting potion stacks. Now, that's a very small thing you might think of, but it could be something that could lead to a bigger picture here. Now, Niski should win out on trades. Larson lost two potions from that. So that means Niski can push in the wave, trade aggressively because he has more potions, and there's a world where either Niski can roam top in the early game, or he can get TP advantage on Larson for forcing him to TP back early. This is also just a classic Adam taking E into this matchup. It's like really not what you want no. at level one. He's, he's going to be bullied around by Odo Amna. He also got to lane a little bit late, so Odo's going to get that push. But as you rightly said, due to this trade, he's giving so much more to Niski. He is setting him up for success very early on into the lane. It's helping him get prio, and we know what Fnatic do. They send resources mid, they help Niski get that prio, and then they use him to move around the map to help get the sides ahead. And I just think an excellent read and use of resources, knowing that, hey, the Jace is going to have range in the early levels. Yeah, you get a few more skill points, you can contest him, but just staying out of that lane when you're weaker, using your time to support your laners, and just waiting for that wave to come crashing into the tower so you can grab that CS. Well done by Fnatic, and especially by Adam. Yeah, early world will spot out Inspire. Do you expect? No, he, I think they know that the Raptor is water, so he's going to go straight to the red buff. A couple things just to mention. Adam playing with PTA on Camille. We've seen Omnistone, Camille's Grasp, Conquer, all these things. So we'll have to keep our eyes on how that rune actually progresses when he gets the all-ins. And again, Niski just winning up this mid lane, keeping the push. Inspire is going to get spotted. Whippo will be pathing towards a crab. With this mid push, Niski can get an early base. Maybe he just TPs back here and pressures. Slarson stops him. And I think Niski definitely a player that we've been keeping our eyes on. In the first half of the season, it felt like he was maybe a little bit quieter. His discussions progressed more and more. We saw him becoming a rock and eventually a standout player, and it certainly was the case in the series versus G2 in general. Niski, incredible numbers. Uh, I think at 12.1 on the CSD there, or the gold, or rather that's gold average, not CSD. So you can see pulling ahead, getting stronger as an individual player. And initially, started this year, you told me this matchup, I would always assume Larson would be the player to watch. But now, with Niski's recent performances, he is the man that I have my eyes on. Yeah, especially in the G2 series. Had a fantastic series. That one blunder on the Silas, sorry, stop watched. Hang on as a second. As the branding comes through. Initial snare. Good block by and follow up there by Hillising. No, yeah, just going back to Niski point. Four games of TF against G2. The only real kind of misstep he had was in that Silas game. So providing so much to the team that that's what Fnatic needs. They need resources for these star players. You know, like Upset can take over a game. Niski can take over a game whenever, and especially Adam too. And I think what's really important as well is that I think at first, many people believed the upset was really the only way that you could win. It's going to taking a lot of Follow damage. Follow up. Should be an easy finish now. He's dead. Coming out, he's got the active, doesn't even need it. First blood, well played by the side of Rogue. If you get hit by two bindings back to back, Fnatic bot lane, you are in for a hell of a lot of hurt. Now, the one thing you can say about Rogue that hasn't changed is this two versus two in the bot lane. Even against Mad last week, they found themselves getting 2v2 kills, but here's the TP flank. V. Double TP. Coming now, in. Have they overstayed their welcome? Have they overcommitted? Trimby wears the black shield. What options does he have? He's now using it on Hansama, but it doesn't matter. All the physical damage just shredding him down. Punished for finding those advantages. There's the TP advantage from the level one. Larson TP back to mid. Niski TPs to bot. There's a ward behind them. Punished for winning lane. Oh and no. It's yeah. the classic fanatic. You know, it's that, it's that. No, we're not going to send one TP, we're going to send two. You could make the argument that you didn't really need both, but Han Sama and Trimby knew that there was no point in flashing because they were guaranteed. I'm going to have to spin this because I had a Han Sama praise graphic already. <laughs> uh, but we'll run it anyway and we'll say, you can see why Fnatic would have wanted to focus Han Sama <laughs> down. He pushes forward in lane. Where do you think those CS deficits come from? Fnatic using both those TPs, and as you highlighted, Kadrill, using the advantage they built earlier to punish bot lane yep. for over pushing. Adam's going to gank mid here because I think top wave is in an absolutely disaster spot. He's going to be so far down in CS. So as good as this play was from Fnatic, the gold is completely even. Look at this wave still bouncing into Odo. He's already like 17, 18 CS up. Adam's going to be really far behind and will get punished for that TP. Inspired could also just interrupt the back hit. Yep, just being a troll. Uh, now, one <laughs> of the things that Fnatic could have done there was actually use their prior with mid and potentially set up a dive because, on top lane because that wave was starting to stack and slow pushing, uh, but they decide not to do it. Instead, Whippo going to continue clearing through his jungle where he will meet Inspired, who knows he can invade because enemy mid has just gone back to base. Let's keep our eyes on top lane especially because Oroamne is so far ahead now as well, but also has TP advantage. So now he can repay the favor into bot lane. 
and look for a dive bot if they so wish to do so. But you're completely right. These kind of stacking waves, as good as they are for auto is a freeze, the enemy team can use it against you for a dive, which we've seen so many teams do uh, recently. So keep our eye on that top lane, but these two side lanes definitely getting ahead in the lane phase itself from Rogue, but good team play from Fnatic to shut it down. Yeah, keeping the gold neck and neck. 100 gold advantage for Fnatic right now. Now, of course, Blippo with both of those kills, about 600 of that is in his pocket. He is the one we need to keep an eye on. And currently he's on bottom side. Maybe gonna look for the dive here on Hansama. Incredibly low. Black Shield is gonna do some work, but it's not gonna stop Niski from realm warping in. Hansama now going to be in trouble. Trying to backstep as soon as he get hit by the extended range out of the E. But now, Whipple locked up under the tower. The chain CC not quite enough to finish the job. They should be able to grab two quick and easy kills here for the side of Fnatic. Odawamne sitting on the top side. Nothing he can do. Yeah, great setup from Fnatic. Niski as Pryo goes towards bot. What was Rogue's only defending play? It was the TP from Odawamne. He TP's in the middle of the lane itself, right under his tower in vision. Adam just cancels him straight in his face and loses nothing for it, so this bot lane, this winning bot lane of Morgana into Rakan is backfiring heavily. They're so far behind right now in CS, in XP, and now if the Rakan can be unlocked on the map, that makes Larson's life even harder. And again, while the Azir will eventually outscale this rise in terms of range and damage output later on, especially in these 5v5 team fights, early on it can be very difficult for the Azir to be able to match this push. So Niski, along with all the early pressure and assistance that he had from players like Adam and the Rogues from Whippo, he's been using this prior to move around the map, and that's the second time Time. He's now made his way to bot lane to set up upset for success. Yeah, the lane phase from Rogue is fine, just the team play seems really off. Communication, execution, when it comes to pushing out lanes, team being behind, making team plays, just looks really, really off for Rogue, but it's very clinical for Fnatic. And Rogue, obviously a team that we saw during the regular season dominate early games, and usually, outside of those Rogue moments that we've talked about, pretty cleanly transitioned their lead. Sadly, that was not the case versus Mad, and they certainly struggled versus Misfits as well, but you can see they got 3-0'd. Game 1, Game 2, those were the rough early games. That's the ones that personally caught me by surprise. I thought even against Mad, they'd be able to find that. Game 3, they still found that success and still fell behind. Things are dire for Rogue right now. We wanted to see a commanding game one to show that the Mad series was just a little bit of a fluke and not potentially a skill discrepancy. Yeah. And uh, their scaling should be all right. Yes, they're losing out on the lane phases and they are quite far behind in this early game right now. And Niski can be unlocked on the entire map. But they have an Azir, they have an Aphelios. We can see what they can do in the late game. The problem is, like they said in draft, they lack a lot of engage. So closing out the game might be very difficult for Rogue itself. We'll have to keep an eye on how these side lanes progress though. So having a look at what's available on the map right now, things like the Herald are up. Uh, both Azia and the Trundle have just gone back to base to spend a little bit of their money. You can see that Niski now has the tier two boots, so he's going to continue to look to roam around the map. But Woodpo sees a window of opportunity where, because Larson has just gone back to base, Niski should be able to get the push off of that assistance to Niski. And then also, if you have a quick look at your minimap and our observers are highlighting, Hillisang already on the roam. Very common player that you'll see, especially when playing into ranged support matchups, who will often be a little bit slower on the roam because they want to focus a little bit more on trying to gain advantages in the two versus system. Yeah, free Herald, easy pickup. Rogue, they put a ward over the wall, they knew it was dying, but no push in mid, and like you said, support wasn't there, so where do you use that Herald is a big question for Fnatic. Could use it mid when Niski gets the push, and you can look for three-man plays on Larson, or you could look to use it bot with Niski's prior where he moves around the map. Larson, gonna dash away. And of course, for Fnatic, everything going very swimmingly in this early game. Four kills to one, they've got the Herald, they've got the Dragon as well. They pulled off the successful bot lane ganks, as we know that they love to do. Adam here. Could have potentially overcommitted there. Odawan may still opting to hammer smash him out of that exchange. Niski. Yeah. He's hovering in the river there. I think both teams are expecting something to happen around the top side. Of course, Rogue have full information thanks to the vision that they have. Whereas Fnatic, not quite in the same boat. But this control over the river on both sides, actually, from the side of Fnatic is very good. You can see these control wards invested top side and on bot side to make sure that they keep moving into Fog of War and to get Rogue guessing consistently. Yeah, look at the vision Rogue have. They see absolutely nothing. So Inspired just came up here to cover Oduamne so he could push out. But Oduamne might be overextending here a bit. He still sees nothing. Inspired cancelled his base once again. So using a lot of time here to make sure Oduamne can push in, chunk out Adam, get a play for himself. Maybe he was expecting Whippo to look for a gank up towards this top side because they haven't spotted him out for quite a while. So that's a really good play, I think, by Rogue itself, because the problem you have right now is you can't walk into River to contest Vision because you get collapsed on. So you walk through the lane, and then when you base, you base together, and then you can move together into the River if you so please. So Inspired not showing in the end, but I think Fnatic Cannon knew something was up there. And good, I think, to see Rogue playing a little bit through Odawamne. He's a guy that really impressed us in the regular season and struggled a bit against Hurit, struggled a bit against Arma in the most recent series. So to see that priority place there, to see him start building up these 40 CS leads, these additional tower plates is good. The question now, as it always is, when you have a laner with this big of an individual advantage, is how do you transition that elsewhere on the map? How do you make Odo's lead everybody's lead? And the important thing to recognize is that while Odo is ahead on the 1v1, 
when you look at the overall game, Whippo right now is the only one with a mythic item. He is very strong on this Viego. He has a level up on Inspired. He has a CS advantage. And alongside Niski, this mid jungle from Fnatic is very strong and they will often get to move first. So these early objectives, Fna uh, Rogue will likely just have to concede and rely on their scaling later on into the game. Yeah, look at Hillisang. He just ran all the way straight to top lane. Whippo has Herald too, so if Nisky can get up here, it's a four-man play. Trimby stuck in lane. Upset using the ult to clear out the wave in bot, so he should be able to farm from max range. Rogue really need to defend the play here. Larson already basing to get an item to maybe look for a TP, because right now, as strong as Autoamne is, if you have a numbers disadvantage, he can't even walk up to the tower. Here comes the setup for the potential dive. Rumwarp going in as well. Inspired, what can he do? The flash in the immediate stun coming out. That's the Spectral Ma. Autoamne just getting shredded down. Camille might be behind, but she's got more than enough CC to make sure Odo goes down. Fnatic and Whippo now moving to the top side. They've got the Herald to pull out as well. They might not be able to finish the tower, but they're going to grab a couple plates. Beautifully done by Fnatic, and Rogue knew that it was happening, but there was nothing that they could really do to stop it. Larson had gone back to base. He did have the TP up, but it did not matter. The four-man collapse from Fnatic will get them kills, it will get them plates, and it will continue to extend their early game gold advantage. Yeah, look at Upset in bot lane. There was not even a cross map. He can just sit there and clear out the wave. Rogue can't even invest TPs to try to shut him down or force him off the wave, because Fnatic can all always match. This is the thing when you have three pushing lanes. Fnatic can push in bot, mid and top. So Hillisang has time to just base. Upset can catch the wave, give the push for one wave or two, run top and make this play happen. Great to see. I mean, what the craziest thing is when we looked at the draft, right, we expected Rogue to have the push in bot. But then what happens? The double TPs, the Rogue's down to bot lane. They shut down this Aphelios Morgana from having pressure. Then in the top side of the map, Odo Omni is dominating. But how do they use the Herald? Oh, it's because they use their mid prior to roam top really? and then contest for it. It's crazy how Fnatic are executing this early game. Let's see what happens now. Just a cheeky ignite to threaten Inspire. Hillisang upset. Might be in trouble here. Hansama can go for the active. Nope. Upset can use the cleanse, but Hillisang now going to get taken down. Is Oda Wamne TPing down to the bottom side? So Dragon secured by Rogue, but using a TP to do so. Yeah, I wonder if Larson's going to TP top to defend that top tower because Adam can just push this in and take it, I believe, on the next couple of waves. Looks like Oda Wamne realizes that, cancels his base and says, guys, my top tower is dying. Let's get their bot tower at least. Larson is going to clear in mid and it'll be a trade off of towers by the looks of it. But you're completely right, Vidius. This early game kind of fell apart for Rogue. The early kills in bot from the TPs, the mid lane chunk level one on Larson made it so Niski had the push there as well. So now Oduamne is kind of suffering from it all. And it was something that we credited Fnatic a lot in their series versus G2, how crisp and how well executed their early game looks. And it's impressive to see them further refine it, further execute. And you feel a little bad for Adam because it's one of those situations where he's sacrificing a lot for the betterment of his team, but you can see how that investment for him ends up paying back tenfold later on into the game. And I think this is a, just a further indication of something else that we've talked about, which is the flexibility of this Fnatic roster. Adam has been the center of attention, and Adam has been left on an island, and the Misfits series showed that perfectly, where we have Adam completely on his own. We have games where Niski is the sole focus, where he is roaming on the map. We have games where they're going bot lane every single time. The flexibility of this Fnatic roster with so many strong players is incredible to see, and when they leverage it well, you can see how hard it is for Rogue to match it. And the flexibility comes through draft and gameplay, right? You can see Fnatic, like you just said, Adam's in a losing matchup. He's going to sacrifice himself. He's going to gank mid. He's going to make sure his team's ahead. He's playing Darius. They're going to invest resources into him now. Odoamne, no flash. He's going to get locked up there for a brief moment. Spectral Mark comes out, followed up by the ulti as well. And there's just nowhere for him to go. Inspired coming in. Maybe they can try to take down Whippo, but he's got the reset as well on the Viego passive. No, a perfect pillar means Whippo will go down. Big money into the back pocket of Inspired. Yeah, good shutdown there. Now Rogue's pinning on towards the bot side, and Hillisang is still moving up. Upsets alone in bot, Adam. Has found Inspired, no flash. Tries to run for his life, not too tanky. Stopwatch buys a bit of time, a brief moment. Larson could come in, he could try to save him with the shuffle. What else is he going to do? Larson, no time to use the ultimate either. He's now trying to chase down Niski. Has to be careful, though, if he overextends. Hillisang and Adam on almost no mana, but if they see CD is zero at all, he could just get dropped. Yeah, Fnatic just have numbers advantage everywhere there go. Mid bot, and especially in the top side. That's the second time in a row. Inspired, I think he was just walking in to clear out vision or maybe look for a camp itself. Gets caught, ends up dying. What a rogue get on the cross map. Nothing. They had to invest a TP to defend the play. They get nothing there, and all they get is a push in bot, and now Hans is based. It's crazy how much control Fnatic actually has over the top side of the map. You can just see all these wards invested. This this trio, this one ward here, the river control they have, the vision is just absolutely mind-blowing from the side of Fnatic, and they're using their early game control to perfection. Let's have a look back at exactly how this one broke down. Yeah, they have the ult onto Adam. Odo Emery tries to knock him away to get the hex deck cancelled. He does in the end, but too much follow-up without Flash. Now Inspired comes in, and it looks like he's fine here because he kills Whippo. So after he dies, it looks like the fight's over. Hang on, fight in top. Going forward, Niski. It's just too easy if you're a rise. 
Oh, his ear, there's just nothing you could do. You could dance all you want, but he's going to point and click you eventually. Niski on a rampage. Yeah, great play from Niski. I'd love to see how he got onto Larson there, because he must have dash, he must have flash, and he must have his tower passive as well. But Niski gets the solo kill. We talked about Fnatic having a 1 3 1 comp. They're in a 1 3 1 right now, and you can see Rogue just can't match it. Yes, Otto Amnick can push in bots, but Adam can probably all in him if he has vision. Niski looking for Inspired here. Hillisang has flash. Now stepping forward, Hillisang not gonna connect with anybody, but he can leap right back out to Niski. Guardian proc gonna reduce some of that damage. Hansam is strong with the gun combo he has, but no one is walking into his effective range. Adam now even comfortable in the 1v1. He's a level up on Odawamne. That was Rogue's only strong oh. point, and he's fishing for the 1v1. Odawamne oh. for now. Nope, that's Adam on a killing spree. Oh, the solo laners of Fnatic are taking over. We said the solo laners get ahead. It's really hard for Rogue to play. Rogue are trying to group up and do something. Larson gets solo killed. Adam gets vision on everyone on Rogue, just solo kills Otto Amni as well. They can't push side lanes and they can't even group mid. Such an impressive early game from Fnatic across the board. Everything that they needed to do, they have done, and they have controlled the game pretty much for the entirety of it. Look at the gold sitting on the two solo laners. Whippo is so much further ahead of Inspired as well, and it feels like Rogue's strategy of trying to leverage their pushing bot, leverage their pushing top, scale for the later game, rely on their team fighting, it's all just falling apart. And gentlemen, I think this level of team play is doubly impressive. We remember the start of season context for Fnatic. Adam, Coming in as a rookie, Whippo role swapping to a brand new role, but we've talked about it before. The one thing they have over every other team is best of five experience this season. You <laughs> called it the Gulag Cadrel. It's this the Gulag. team has gotten better and better. You remember the Vitality series, how shaky, how bloody it was, improving against Misfits, taking down G2 with those dominating TF performances, and now here in Game 1 versus Rogue, Fnatic look incredibly strong. The question is, is this just a curse? Because we've seen this from so many of the teams in our playoff runs. We've seen Fnatic get stomped in their Game 1 against G2 in their best of five to then have them bounce back. And often, when you look at these best of fives, this first game is a big indicator of some of the big strengths. Rogue's game plan coming into the game was more about scaling, relying on some of their dominant laners to find advantages. And credit to Han Summer and Trimby, they did find a two versus two kill, but Fnatic's response was better. They invested teleports, they utilized Niski and Whippo are moving around the map, getting early game advantages, and they've been able to dominate off the back of that. I think the way you said it is beautifully right. Hans and Trimby find the lead, but Fnatic as a team find a way to shut it down, and that's the difference you're seeing in these games. Now that these solo laners are ahead, they have full control of the map. The team play is great to see. Now they're gonna get their second dragon. Larson might get this top tier one, but for now it just feels like Fnatic's in full control. The only plays Rogue are making are lane phase plays. Definitely. At this point, Larson just going to take what he can, grab the tower. They're down 4k gold. Now, as you highlighted in the composition, scaling always an option for Rogue. If they can find the front-to-back team fights, they certainly have the tools to win the day. Azir and Aphelios, two of the strongest scaling champions in the current meta. Maybe, just maybe, they can keep a rise at arm's length, the Camille, a Viego at arm's length, but it is going to be difficult. And so this is where two important things have to be discussed. Number one, Fnatic can sometimes be their own worst enemy. Fnatic have shown that sometimes they are over-aggressive, they are over-eager, they will take fights that they don't need to take. Um, I'm sure we can think back to a number of times Hillisang made an engage happen, and you're like, Hilly, are you all right there? Um, and then it ends up Game in three against G2. Exactly. So this is something that Fnatic have shown can still be a problem for them, and in a position like this, something that they have to be wary of. The other thing to take into consideration, Rogue in their very first game against Mad, the reason why Mad couldn't just roll over them was because the way in which Rogue actually managed their side waves. Every time Mad tried to play through two lanes, Rogue would make sure that the third lane was completely pushed out and they were consistently catching them and wave clearing. So Fnatic need to make sure that they don't slow the game down too much because even though Rogue might not be able to control the early game the same way that many of the teams in the LEC do, they're still a smart team and they can be pretty tricky and clever with how they manipulate their ways. Certainly. And of course, for Fnatic, this is one of the hardest points of the game to push through and push further. If you get a Baron, obviously easy picking on those tier two towers, but really have to find those creative punishes, have to move across the map very well to start breaking tier two without the help of one of these bigger buffs, without the help of a prior team fight at one of these major objectives. Yeah, I think patience is the aim of the game here, Fnatic. They're going to push in now because Baron's spawning in 10 seconds. They want to get some vision around here. You can see Niski's first to the jungle because Larson has to catch the wave. Similarly in bot, they have to catch bot wave as hands. Has to get away from that realm warp. They were going to collapse on him and he probably would have died. There has to be best of flash. Potentially doubly important, as highlighted in Pick Ban by Juvedius. The setup is so crucial for Rogue that they want to win these fights, and now they're just in no position to set up around any objective, around anything, because they're just fighting to get back into their own jungle. 
let alone the dragon that's spawning in three minutes, let alone the Baron that just spawned now. I think we've outlined clearly how Fnatic want to play the game. They want to push insides and move mid. We just saw it there and Hans had to flash. Now the question is, what do Rogue do as a team? You've got good scaling, you know, Azir and Aphelios will scale. You lack engage, yes, but how do you weather the storm? And I think that controlling side lanes, catching waves, and making sure you group up mid as much as possible to shut down the plays is the best way to do it, Vedius. And here we see a TP, though. Fnatic are trying to shut that down. Adam coming in, hookshot wall dive, very difficult Is to get away get from. Are they gonna go? That's gonna be a blue trinket coming out. They spotted him. There's just nowhere for him to run. The ulti will not be enough. Niski now unstoppable. Fnatic, are they willing to go for this Baron? Oh yes, there are. They're Fnatic, baby. 40 seconds on Larson. They're gonna start it up. Inspired has flashed the steal, but I think Fnatic have good turn. They don't have Realm Warp just yet, so I think Hillisang is the main point of engage. Look where he is. On the flank, Rogue, no vision whatsoever. They have a brief moment where the trinket comes out. The pillar gonna grab it just a little bit. Can they steal it away? Can they get oh. it? Oh, no. flash over the wall too. Right into the waiting arms of Fnatic. It's an absolute disaster for Rogue. And Blipo's still going. He's taking no away the shuttle. He's taking away the pillar. But Hansama, maybe this is a zero moment. Black shield, but he just doesn't have the damage yet. It's too early in the game. He gets absolutely shredded. Trimby running for his life. Fnatic routing Rogue in the pit. Oh, Rogue are just getting run over. Inspired flash in one second too late. Hans has no flash. Larson was dead from before. Otto Amne just pushed out bot. He knows that the top side play is doomed. And now Fnatic are just so far ahead. 7k gold lead at 21 minutes and they have a Baron. We talked about how Rogue wanted to try and control the side lanes, try and make things a little bit harder for Fnatic. But the moment that Larson dies, that is the go button for Fnatic. The delayed flash from Inspired. He, he was just a little bit too late yep. getting over the wall. It looked like that, that HP was low enough for him to make the play, but it wasn't. The moment that he drops, Hunt Summer then gets committed. Fnatic find themselves kills. They find themselves a Baron, and now they're looking to end the game. Yeah, and I have to say, credit to Inspired. He just flipped it. They had no vision on the Baron, so he just 50 50 it. He knew that was their only way to win. Trimby, I think, had no wards. I think he had zero wards, no pinks, no nothing, because he walked up to the pit and he couldn't throw anything over. The only thing they threw over for vision was the uh, the Aphelios turret. But by the oh, time he yeah. threw that over, uh, the Nash was dead. So now Rogue. Have lost it, and now it's all about weathering the storm, but it's even harder because this 1v1 can come out. Fnatic obviously have no TP, so it's a little bit harder, but they can dive you. They have a Rakan that's fed, and he has a flash available, so he can just instantly jump on you. These tier twos are going to start breaking. We've seen already Fnatic have so many engaged options that they get oh, Larson. Ahead. They might start a fight, but Larson looking for his hero moment. He's been locked up. He's just going to get taken down. He just gets deleted. He pushes one back, though, and maybe it'll be enough. Whippo stealing away, shuffling out on his own Azir form, but. Rogue holding on for now, delaying this Baron, slowing Fnatic down at the cost of Larson's life. But I think it's a play that you have to try and make, because if they get themselves two kills there, they slow down the push from Fnatic. They know that their base is going to be broken if they don't try something, so they make a last-ditch effort. Larson goes for the hero play, it ends up faltering, and while getting a one-for-one, one, Fnatic secure themselves under the tower. Yeah, you have to make those kind of plays. In the end, it does slow down the siege. Looks like Fnatic are only going to get that mid-tier 2 and a dragon for now, so side lane tier 2s are alive. There's a big Top wave stacking, but for now, Rogue have slowly weathered the storm, but Fnatic are gonna come back even stronger. Weathered the storm of the Baron, to be certain, maybe Adam gets this tier two tower, but it looks like Rogue will respond. But the 8K gold lead and the three Drakes remain, gentlemen, so oh, yeah. it is still, they're not out of the storm yet, and they might not be for a very long time. Again, scaling is the answer, and sadly for Rogue, I think, Holding on for dear life is going to be the theme for the rest of this game. Larson's just walking into the jungle looking for a blue buff. Doesn't have any vision to work with either, so he's just going to have to give this one up. And yeah, Rogue looking for these desperation plays. When you're this pushed under your towers and back skin all and this far behind, these are the plays you have to look for. Also, the, so the thing about the scaling angle, like, yes, on paper, like, if they were even in gold, I could see a way in which Rogue could definitely win out in fights. Um, but they, the other problem they have is, is upset. And uh, something when I think about Ezreal is his scaling is often relative to how much threat he has on him as a champion. It's very difficult to lock down upset with the composition that Rogue has. So, and also Camille is very, very fit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They're so, all fed. <laughs> uh, Odoamne going in anyway. He's not too concerned. Is it going to cost him his life? Not quite. He's going to flash out upset. that black shield. not going to lock it. <gasps> it does just barely manages to keep Odoamne alive. Trimby, just enough AP and enough points in that ability to keep him going. But that's a tier two down for Fnatic, and the gold lead continues to grow. Almost 10k now in their favor. Yeah, top tier two falls. And the Ezreal did have to flash away that time, and the only real way that Upset can get locked down is if he goes too deep. There we saw it. He eat over the wall, had to flash back over, but they get the objective that they came for, and they force Rogue even further back into their base. Almost a 10k gold lead now. But the point that I was trying to make is that you need like a good 10 to 15 minutes on Rogue if you really want to go stand to to toe with Fnatic. You you need to try and get so much more gold onto your uh, 
your side if you really want to stand a chance. Yeah, and I don't know if they're going to get I, the chance to stall that. I think the more that. you theorycraft the team fight, the worse it looks for Rogue. Yeah. If we just go with Valios' ear, you're like, oh, good, late game is good. If you're like, also, there's a Camille and a Viego, and if you ignore the Ezreal, he's going to kill your front line yeah. in like two seconds. I think if you're the coaches and you're Rogue, you just look at this game and you say, well, we drafted winning lanes, and in the end, we didn't win them because they kind of, you know, we lost track of TPs, bad timings, bad yeah. pushouts, bad covers, whatever it may be. But the core, core point of Rogue's comp is get lanes ahead, get into mid game ahead, and have the setup, make them walk into you, yes, poke them. Exactly. And that's how you get to engage. In the end, you fall behind, which makes it even worse. And now with winning sides, better engage and better, in a sense, team fight just because of how well they skirmish and they can pick you off with numbers advantage. And they're, of course, ahead. And now it's just a case of how they close the game out. Rogue can make hero plays. Larson already sitting in this bush looking to catch out Niski, who has no flash. This could be the start of something for Rogue, but they need to find it. Niski, of course. Run more puppet available, but no flash as you highlighted. Trippy stepping forward into oh. Blippo. Gonna use the shackles, but Blippo already on the way out. Ooh, this they time it worked. Safety. That's true. No pauses today. We know about the weird rise alt interactions now. He was clicking towards it. So he got taken out. And now, because Rogue invested. <laughs> the funny thing resources. about that is, I thought he was actually outside the yeah, yeah. wall. It looked like, like his back foot was outside. Where you are. It's about where you click, uh, it's spiritually where you uh, want to be. Yeah, but the Rogue, yeah, tried to look for something, doesn't work, and then you do something on the other side of the map. That's just how the game naturally goes when you're this far behind. So they're going to have to find a miracle play here, Rogue. I, I have a lot of respect though for Fnatic in terms of playing this game patiently. They haven't overforced, yep. and like obviously we have seen them play a clean and patient game, right? When they played against G2, they had some really big stomps and they were very clean. Um, I think that just against a team like Rogue is something you have to be careful of because they will look for those opportunities, they will look for those picks, and if you're not restrained, you can get heavily punished for it. So I like what we're seeing from Fnatic in this game one. Very positive game. They've come in with a strong draft. They've come in and executed well upon that draft, uh, and they are definitely setting themselves up as the favorites in this series. Certainly are, and potentially could look to end the game here in the next few minutes. We're a minute and 15 seconds away from that Cloud Soul for Fnatic, as well as four seconds away from that Baron. Fnatic already have pushed in the mid lane. We take a look across the board. Rogue flashes are up, in theory, outside of Larson and Odawamne. They are pretty ready for this team fight. That said, Fnatic could just beat them down with their wallets. It's still a 10k gold lead that Rogue have to find a way to overcome. Yeah, it's just interesting to see because now this game, the stakes have changed. It's not about worlds now, it's about the title. It's about Rogue's revenge against Mad Lion, and it's about Fnatic rising up after such a poor performance in spring, I have to say. It's great to see Fnatic's bounce back in this game alone in the series, putting in a statement game one just now. It's all about closing it out. And like you said, Vedia's not getting a bit too over-aggressive when it comes to these dives. Baron's up, they can burst it down. They have many options, you know, you can just push out lanes with Ryze, Ryzel towards the Baron, and push it and get it before they can do anything. But Rogue, in their own jungle, ready to react. Spyro has Flash now, and they're trying to fish around to get some information. Although I'm bot, Larson in mid, they have TPs if anything kicks off. It looks like Fnatic might just want to push them into their base for now. I like the way in which Fnatic is controlling their sideways. They set up a good wave on bot lane, kept that pushed in. They're keeping the pressure up in mid. You can see Niski playing the top side. Adam, oh, he nearly face check. He's oh, gonna he face check. Um, but the binding mist. Soul shackles. The pillar pushing him back. He's gonna be locked up for a few seconds now. He tries to ult with the Camille to get himself out of safety. He's very tanky, and the flash is gonna get him out. He has to burn everything to do it, but he manages to survive. That should have been a kill for Rogue, but now the backfire is gonna come in. They're gonna lose Dragon for it. Fnatic don't even bother about it. Rogue lost a lot of ultimates for that, but they realize they can't do Baron because the waves are pushed in in mid and in top. I think that should have been a pick for Rogue and maybe an avenue for them to find some comeback in this game. Definitely could have been a huge play, but. Rogue end up falling short. Now, Fnatic continuing to clear our vision. They will get themselves the soul. The Binding will connect onto Bwipo, but I doubt any follow-up is going to happen. The rest of Rogue starting to collapse around the Baron area. The fact that they've gotten Cloud Soul and now kept pressure around the Baron area is big. But the fact that Bwipo got chunked out could cost them a little bit as Rogue are now fighting to take back mid-priority, assuming that Bwipo has to back off. Of course, he is the Viego. He has enough sustain. He can just clear up off a of camp and be full health and ready for a fight. Not quite level 16 yet. But is getting stronger and stronger. Rogue feels like the Baron flip might be the last ditch effort to try to get away back into this game. Rippo got the crab. The problem is Fnatic just need to push Rogue out now and retake vision. They have very little vision around this Baron after taking that Cloud Zone, after having base. But now Larson has to dash away from Niski. You can see there on the minimap. Adam's chasing him, and that's Larson's flash already gone. So now they can push in the waves. Baron is going to be on the menu soon. Last one was forced to flash there. The risk of Adam's ultimate was too great, and he didn't want to gamble it. So now with that gone, he go. becomes so much easier to kill in the fight. And Fnatic is going to start pressuring the Baron. Upset, going to try and force Inspired away. The waves have been pushed in. Fnatic with good control. This is where the game will be decided. Fnatic, yes, is very far ahead. They just need to execute this one Baron. They should be in a good spot to clean end it out. Hillisang's coming from base. They want to look for an engage. They want to push Rogue back. On time of good guns, three items. Maybe, just maybe, we can get another fat team fight damage chart from him if he can hold on. Upset, though. 
throwing the ulti across at least one member oh. of the team. Trimby getting chunked out. It is not the luxury of an Alistar or an engaged support. He's only got a binding and a black shield Rumble. to his name. Yep, there it is. Realm Warp coming in, just as you call it, Cage. Well, now they've set their sights completely and totally on this Baron. Adam going to the pit, where he can try to stop Rogue from getting in. 6K, 5K, 4K, Fire. getting lowered. Inspire, can he come over the wall? Can he steal it? No. Fnatic taking their second Baron of the game. A Cloud Soul backing them up as well. They are poised to take game one. And interestingly clean from Fnatic. They don't overdive, they don't overchase. They just push them back, Realm Warp to the Baron. They know their timings, they secure it, and they all back off. Now they have the setup, and they should start to siege into Rogue Space. Yeah, I like the fact that Fnatic actually turned off the Baron and chose to try and fight or skirmish against Rogue because they know that they're 10k gold up, so if Rogue choose to take a fight, they're more than certainly going to win it. And on top of that, Fnatic then use that to reclaim vision control over that top side of the jungle, and then creatively use the Realm Warp to get back into the Baron pit to be able to uh, secure it before Rogue could even answer. Just very well played, great patience, uh, and a very, very solid game one from Fnatic. Oh man, I have to say, everything sucks for the side of Rogue right now. Everyone's so far down in levels, inspired three levels down. Niski's level 18, Hans two levels down. Now the siege comes in. Looks like they're gonna go for a 1-1-3. One, one, both TPs are available. They're going to siege onto this bot tier 3. If anything kicks off, the solo laners will TP, TP in, and it's going to be a seesaw effect where Fnatic push in bot. When Rogue match, they'll push in top and mid. When they match there, they'll keep pushing in bots. So just keep your eyes on how they keep chunking out these towers, depending on where Rogue puts numbers. You know, I think Niski could even, like, threaten to dive onto Larson. Oh, speaking of the devil, it might just happen. Bye -bye. Yep. <laughs> doesn't even need to dive. Yep. One shot is before he can walk under the tower, and that's going to be bad. It's going to be at least one inhibitor getting taken down. But now Hillsang, they're going in Oda Wabne. He does a lot of damage, but he's just so squishy. Hansama stepping forward. He just wants to auto attack somebody. But nobody is in range. Fnatic breaking down another tower. All three inhibitor towers down. All three inhibitors soon to follow from the start of the game along every single step. Fnatic have been in control. Rogue needed early advantages. They could not find them, and Fnatic never gave them away back into this game one with absolute confidence, with absolute dominance, and a 15k gold lead with Adam diving into the fountain, ready to go. Fnatic will take game one in this semifinal. Wow, really clean game from Fnatic, I have to say. You can just see how clean it is by just the way it ended. All three nips down, all three lanes pushing in. Just really felt like Rogue didn't stand a chance. They picked these winning lane champions. Fnatic take over with good map play. And from there, it just felt like they had no chance. Yeah, it was just extremely well executed from Fnatic. And I think the biggest thing was, we talked about in draft how, hey, when you have the Jace top lane, you're going to have push there for Rogue. With the ring support in Morgana and Aphelios, they're likely going to be able to get push bot lane too. They even 2v2 kill them bot lane as well. And you're like, OK, this is a pretty big deal for Rogue. But then what do Fnatic do? They do what they always do. They invest TPs. They roam around the map. They use their mid prior extremely well. And I think that this is why Niski needs to receive so much credit, because he is being given the resources to roam, and he is roaming and affecting the rest of the map for Fnatic. Yeah, it feels like Fnatic have found their formula. My question is, Rogue, what's your formula? Formula. They've shown us team fights. They've shown us winning lanes. The whole split long, it was lane domination, but it just feels like they're really up and down in what they want to play right now. And again, we talked about game one as testing the waters. Perhaps Rogue bringing a new strategy. Perhaps they're not going to feel too bad about this one. Maybe there is more up on their sleeve, but we know they did not get to play their composition the way they wanted to whatsoever. And we're soon going to take a look at how Fnatic ran away with this game. But first, let's get a preview of what's awaiting the winner of today's series, a showdown with the reigning champions, Mad Lions. But so here it is Mad Lions that will reign supreme in the pit. They will lock world for themselves and they will move up to base row. Mad Lions somehow are winning these fights. Mad Lions with one of the greatest comebacks I have seen this year. They make their way to finals. We ask you to submit your most epic moves. And the winner is Aokun. Aurelia versus Zed, 1v1 in the mid lane, level 8, blade surge back, Aurelia trying to find purchase, death mark comes out, but the flaws do I will not connect, it's a clean flash, it's a clean dash back, he's moving everywhere across and Aurelia can't touch him, Aokun makes the play. Kia, movement that inspires. against me. I can calculate 90 trillion moves in advance. Not fair. Not fair. Red Bull gives you wings.
Welcome back, everyone, to the analyst desk after Game 1. Fnatic started the series with a dominating win. Yeah, it was behind you. Uh, and another uh, stellar game. So I want to take this time that we have, which is about six minutes, to uh, talk about two big topics. Of course, I think we need to start with draft, as always, because uh, of the importance of a Game 1 draft, always. A couple of things that stood out to me. Treats, first up. Rogue elected to go to the red side, right? They had the choice. What did you think of the choices that they made with that red side and the possible counter pick? I think from their perspective, they thought that they had both answers into the TF and the Rice. And I think it was clever that Fnatic picked the Rice to kind of block the TF away from Rogue. So I think after that, they had a scaling option into it in the Azir. And I don't really like this choice from Rogue, honestly. Uh, I think they mostly chose red side for the counter pick uh, on top lane which I think honestly worked out fine, but it didn't really have an impact in this game because there was just too many things happening around the map. But the red side was for the top lane pick mostly, and it worked out fine, but I think they also realized that the rice was a massive problem. Yeah, and I think we saw them return to a lot of what we wanted to see, what we were talking about at the top of the day, which is priority in lanes, right? You have a Jace in the top side, you're going to have priority, and especially when it's a counter pick too, you're definitely going to get that in the bot lane too, as soon as the Rakan gets locked in. You have the Morgana, which got a kill, right? You're going to have pushing lanes, you're trying to take down turret plates. The flaw, I think, in this strategy are the other pieces in the composition, especially that Azir, like you mentioned, because when you have prio lanes on side, you need a mid lane champion and a jungle champion that can support the attention that lanes like that demand when it is on opposite sides of the map. And an Azir is going to get outroamed by a Rise. And frankly, Larson isn't going to be allowed to accomplish much on the map. We've seen it a couple of times, I think, uh, from Larson going to that when the TF is off the table, when something like an Orianna, which can also fill a scaling and controlling role, is off the table. Are we seeing the edges of a champion pool there? Because it is almost every single time that we've seen him go to the Azir. And unfortunately, for if you're playing Fnatic, the game is going to go too fast for you to have an impact. I mean, I think it's not really a challenge. Champion pool is issue. I think it's just a prioritization yeah. that they had in picking their Azir on four pick instead of three pick. I think if they go for the TF on three pick, sure, Rice is like a fine matchup into TF, but at least then he can match the roam. So I think it's not really. Larson's fault in this case, I think it's just a bad prioritization from Rogue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, a huge problem here that Rogue find themselves playing against, especially like last week we saw Humanoid on the rise, champions with global abilities that can force numbers advantages, even though, right, they got that 2v2 kill on the bot side, immediately seeing TPs, repeat ganks, all this stuff. It is it is very hard for Rogue to play their controlled style against a huge roamer like Niski. And uh, with that, I'd like to go to uh, the next big thing I want to talk about, which is the way that Fnatic choose to play with Adam or the way Adam chooses to play with Fnatic. We've been tracking this for a while. The fact that he is willing to give up priority in lane, waves, whatnot, to roam around the map, even when it doesn't seem like the best option. Honestly, it's really interesting because it's somewhat reminiscent of Whippo when he first joined the league. All, all the time, like on his Orn, he would sack a wave to roam mid lane and make a gank happen. And we saw it in this game. Guarantee priority in mid lane from Niski. He starts E in the matchup against Jace. You're always going to get pushed in. You're going to be unhappy. Then here after TPing bot lane, we were actually kind of worried because all of a sudden, Odo has this great freeze against him. Adam's going to be down 20 CS, but it plays into the game plan of Fnatic where it doesn't matter if your top laner is down 20 CS because in a minute, you're going to be bot lane again to repeat punish that lane. Yeah, I think Adam knows that it's not really his game to win in this one. He knows that he doesn't have the prior against against the Jace, and I think he just realizes that if my bot lane is ahead and the Morgana Filius can't really smurf the lane, then we're winning. So I think he just does this TP play on bot to make sure that his bot's winning and can be in a good position for a repeat gank with the with Niski on the rise. So it's kind of smart play from Fnatic, and we often see this from Adam. It is, it's it's incredible to me though, seeing a, a rookie player come in already, we've already said after today he's gonna have played as many games in the postseason as he did in the regular season, but to see him be so selfless, to see him be so well-rounded, you heard him talk about at the top of the day, how much faith his team has in him, how much help they've been to him as well. Fnatic are so on point, they're such a well-oiled machine and they're playing off each other perfectly. So let me then ask you, uh, you know, from my perspective, right? If you're rogue, you know that every time the teleport is up, Every time the wave is favorable or even unfavorable, you know that Fnatic is going for those dives, is going for those skirmishes. Um, is it then as simple of just be the first person to do it? Just be the first team to pull the trigger in that regard and draft for that? Is that the solution here for Rogue? I think in general, their draft wasn't really set up to, to fight back. They were they just played for having strong lanes 
as Cadrill said on the cast as well, and then just get their lanes ahead and slowly build a goal lead. But when Fnatic just blows up the map, there's they don't have a lot of counter. So like, do you blow up the map first? Then is is that the strat? I mean, if you can get the right champions for a draft, because if you look at at this draft from Rogue, it is reminiscent of their style in a way where, well, if the early game they're not getting challenged a lot, your top lane's gonna win by default, your bot lane's gonna win by default, and Larson is good enough to like go even in this lane, right? But the problem comes when other teams are going to fight against you, and that's what Fnatic drafted for. That's what they did it in their early play style. So it has to change in the draft for Rogue to be able to fight back in that early game. They're on blue side. What's their first pick? I mean, I think they have yes, to deal. <laughs> they have to deal with the TF rise situation. I think yeah. they can't leave it unnoticed anymore. It's just crazy to me that teams haven't really figured this out yet. Niski on rise and TF always insane, and I think. If they're on the blue side now, maybe they ban one and first pick the other. Maybe they leave both open and pick the rise. I think they have a lot of options, but they need to show that they can also do this roaming mid style that, uh, that uh, Fnatic go for always. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly on the money with that, trying to battle over that, that globals in the mid lane situation. And even if you feel more comfortable on blue side and you want to ban both of them, I'm also completely okay with that. Let's get us back to some stable mid lane champions, because then you can try to play a more calm early game where Niski's not going to be sprinting around killing your sides. Mm, that's <laughs> what you want. Well, Fnatic is, Fnatic's rather magical playoffs run continued in game one, but we'll see if Ro can take away some of that momentum when we return.